What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick Six Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host, joined on this YouTube exclusive week 10. Week 10. Look ahead at the lines with my buddy John Breach. Breach, what's going on, pal? Let's dive right into these games. Remember, by the way, not that it mattered if you got 51 versus 54, but we nailed that Bill Seahawks over. Hope you cashed it last week. We'll try and find you some more winners this week. And we'll start with Thursday night football. The Colts at the Titans. Colts, uh, tough losers against the Ravens on Sunday. That puts them at a pretty big disadvantage because the Titans won. They need to win these games against Tennessee if they want to catch back up in the divisional race. Titans minus two and a half. The over under 49 and a half breach. Yeah, this is a fascinating game. Remember how we used to dread AFC South games on Thursday night? And now we are getting an awesome Thursday night game here. The thing that scares me about the Colts is their offense. I just don't know how good they are. They fell flat on their face against the Ravens. I mean, the Ravens have a decent defense, but they're not hold the Colts to 10 points good enough. And also, you know, the Colts let the Ravens defense score a touchdown. So I am just afraid of picking uh, the Colts to cover because I do not trust their offense. You know, also I don't trust your boy, Phillip rivers on three days rest. I think my general rule of thumb is if you're a quarterback over the age of 37 and you're playing on three days rest, I don't trust you at all. That's a lot of trust issues I have with the Colts offense and Phillip rivers. Brinson, I like the Titans to cover here. Yeah. That's not surprising. Cause you're a Nashville Hawk. You Homer. Uh, I'm not shocked at all that you would take the Titans. Of course, I'm taking the Colts here. The Colts are a better team. The Colts could have beaten the Ravens. They got screwed by the refs and just had some bad luck go the way. Plus, Baltimore's a really good football team. Whereas Tennessee struggled. To, they didn't even cover against the Bears. The Bears. The Bears are terrible. Uh, I do think the Indianapolis defense is flying way under the radar in terms of how good they are. And I think they take care of business against the Titans here. I would probably lean towards the under because it's a Thursday night game. And again, I think both the, uh, I think the Colts defense is pretty good, but Tennessee is willing to get into some shootouts. So that's a little bit concerning. The Bills are headed to Arizona after knocking off Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. Buffalo looks poised to take the division and they will be the second straight AFC East team to head out to Arizona. Kyler Murray and company just lost to Tua Tungvalu in his second game. Josh Allen, a one point underdog in Arizona, a total here of 52 and a half. Yeah, Britson, this might be the best game on the week 10 schedule, which sounds crazy because I don't think we would have ever thought a Bills Cardinals game would be the best game of the week. Now, one thing I automatically like here is the over because I don't think we're going to see any defense or I think we're going to see touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. Uh, we saw with the Bills defense. They did a pretty good against Russell Wilson, but again, the Seahawks still put up 34 points on Sunday. And you know what? I think Kyler Murray is going to have a lot more success against that Bills defense than Russell Wilson did. But I do think the X factor in this game is going to be Josh Allen uh, because he was also the X factor on Sunday. And you know what he did? Those are 400 yards, dices up that Seahawks defense. I think Josh Allen is going to have another huge day in Arizona. I like the Bills here. All right. Uh, I would probably lean towards the Bills as well. Although... I think Arizona will be able to do plenty because Buffalo's defense simply isn't that good. They got look, Russell Wilson made some very uncharacteristic, un uncharacteristic mistakes and they were opportunistic in those spots. I just, there's something fishy about this line. It seems too obvious that the bills are going to go out to Arizona and win. So I'm going to have to think on that one. I, bills at first blush seems obvious and I would tend to lean over with you as well, but something's, something stanky here so let's uh, hit the pause button on that seahawks at the rams the rams are minus two in this game the over under 55 and a half a very robust total breach yeah this seahawks defense cannot stop anyone and now playing against the rams this week is pretty much their worst nightmare because first of all uh, the Rams had a buy, so they've had an extra week to prepare. Number two, Seahawks defense was bad against the Rams when the defense was good over the past two years. Seattle is one in three against the Rams, and uh, the Rams have averaged 31 and a half points in those four games. So basically, Sean McVay, you give him time to game plan against the Seattle defense, they're going to put up points, and this defense can't sack Jared Goff. They can't slow down anyone else. I, I think teams have proven over the past three weeks that you can force Russell Wilson into making mistakes two of the past three games he has turned over the ball quite a few times uh which didn't happen the first few weeks of the season i actually think i like the rams in this spot 
I think I like the Rams too. They have a they have a good defense, or at least a better defense. Um, and they're not a. Well, here's my concern. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's my concern. I am worried that the Rams will do what they did against the Dolphins. Or, well, I'm worried that the Rams will try to run the ball. I'm worried they'll do what the 49ers did against the Seahawks, which is just forced running plays. What Buffalo did was really, really smart. They said, we're not running the ball. Your corners, your secondary is terrible. Anybody can throw on you, and we're just going to let Josh Allen throw. And he got really comfortable and did that. I hope that Sean McVay will let Jared Goff throw to receivers with Robert Woods uh, and Cooper Cup. They should be running wide open um, in really everywhere. So if the Rams are willing to do that, I like the Rams. I tend to lean that way. Anyway, I will uh, say that I, I take, I'll take the Rams and don't bother getting in front of this over under you either take the over or you don't touch it. Do not take the under in this game. Bengals at Steelers Steelers minus nine and a half over under 48 and a half. Joe Burrow getting a little bit of respect here. But it's a nine and a half point underdog is respect. What are you talking about? I know, I know. This, this point spread actually blows my mind because you know who's been surprisingly good at covering the point spread this year? The Cincinnati Bengals. They're six and two against the spread. That's tied for the best mark of any team in the NFL this year. And it, it really just feels way too big for one reason. The Steelers offense just hasn't been that great. And I know people look at the Cowboys game and maybe that will get them to bet the Bengals. Well, it wasn't just the, the Cowboys game where they've struggled. The Steelers obviously are eight and no. Well, guess what? They've only won two of those eight games by more than 10 points. So they've been playing close games. They haven't been able to blow teams out. And one of those games they won by more than 10 points was only by 11 points. So they generally keep things tight. Their strength is obviously their defense, but you know what? Joe Burrow has been able to uh, dice up teams. He looks better every week. He's had a week to prepare for this game. Taking my bangles. The biggest problem here with taking the Bengals is that the Steelers' defensive line is its strength, and the Bengals' offensive line is its weakness. They cannot protect anybody. Like, they can't protect Joe Burrow back there. And you have to be at least worried for his health and safety, given the number of dropbacks that he's had in this rookie season that's you know not going to take him to the Super Bowl or anything. So that's a red flag for me. But I think people will probably be on Pittsburgh in a big way to bounce back after they struggle with Dallas. I think three straight road games for them. Um, they are the only undefeated team in football. I don't know that Ben will lose to a, a team from Ohio is his first loss of the year, but I would lean towards the Bengals too. Joe Burrow will come through the back door. Pittsburgh's defense is not that good on the back end. You can throw on them. And if they can scheme up enough good looks for Burrow and get guys open in the secondary, then I think they can either you know, manage to keep it kind of close or storm through the back door late. So I will also uh, take the Bengals in that spot. I do think 48 and a half. I might look towards the over actually in this one. I could see no. This is dicey. It's dicey. It's dicey. Yeah, you're right. That's a lot of points you're asking out of Joe Burrow. Uh, Ravens at the Patriots on Sunday night football. Baltimore minus six and a half in New England. What a world. I have no idea what's going on here. I mean, the Patriots have such a bad offense. If the New York Jets didn't exist, we would be talking about the Patriots having one of the worst offenses in the AFC. And you look at the Ravens, they there's a lot of opponents they've been shutting down this year. We obviously saw them hold, hold the Colts to 10 points on Sunday. They held the Bengals to three points. They held the Browns to six points. They've been shutting down teams that actually have good offenses. Uh, what are they going to do with a team that has a horrible offense? I think this one's going to be a blowout. I can't see the Patriots scoring more than two touchdowns. So this comes down to whether or not you think Lamar Jackson, that Ravens offense can kind of get back on track. Uh, and, and I do think they are going to and score probably in the mid to high twenties and kind of win this one in a blowout. It just doesn't set up well for new England because Baltimore can dominate in the run game. And Lamar, I think they showed that they were willing to do that a little bit more in the last couple of weeks, like, like later against Pittsburgh, they were willing to run Lamar. And then against Indianapolis, they finally sort of relented and, and decided to run Lamar. If you leave him in the pocket and try to make him beat Bill Belichick's defense, it's probably not going to go well. If you get him out there and you let him run and you play to the strength, you can get a huge lead over New England by running the football and then force them to come back. And they can't do that with this offense. They don't have the horses to do it, especially against a good Baltimore defense. So I would also lean towards taking the Ravens here I would be very scared of the over under, which I would assume I mean, it won't come out until after the Patriots play on Monday, but I would assume that total would be something in the range of like 46, maybe the too high 46, bro. Is that all right? 44. Right. Okay. Finally, Monday night football Vikings at the bears, the Vikings breach have the look of a sneaky 
playoff team that might come out of nowhere. They play the Bears, and then they have the Jaguars, uh, Cowboys, and Panthers in some order immediately after that. So this is a team with the way that Dalvin Cook is playing could get hot. Now, the question is, can they run against Chicago? Well, somebody thinks they can because they're two-and-a-half-point favorites against the Bears on Monday night. Brenton, this is your dream come true. The Bears are in a total free fall. And look, you know you've hit rock bottom in the NFL when you are a 5-4 and four team playing at home and you are an <laughs> underdog to a 3-5 and five team. That's as low as it gets. The odds makers in Vegas are basically saying, we have no respect for the Chicago Bears, and I get it. The Chicago Bears offense has looked absolutely horrible the past few weeks, and you know who hasn't looked absolutely horrible? Dalvin Cook. He has looked the opposite of that. He has been fantastic. We've seen two straight weeks of him steamrolling NFC North teams. We saw him do it against the Packers. We saw him go for more than 200 yards against the lions. I think we're going to see more of the same. I think the Vikings have kind of found their groove. This is the team we thought we would see earlier in the season. Uh, And like you said, it seems like they've kind of found not just their groove, but they found it early enough that maybe they can get in the playoff contention. Uh, I actually love the Vikings in this spot. Yeah, I think I like the Vikings too. I mean, I've been saying all along that the Bears are not a good football team. I am a little worried that the Bears have their defense has traditionally just given the Vikings a lot of trouble in the past few years, like ever since Kirk Cousins got there. And he just doesn't do well against the teams that can pressure him. And I think that they'll be able to pressure the Vikings here. But I also believe that the that the the Vikings will just be able to get Dalvin Cook involved. I just think Dalvin Cook is just friggin' awesome and he's gonna run all over everybody. So I will lean towards the Vikings here now, but it's a Monday night game, so I'll probably wait until Monday to actually, you know, the, you know, a week from tomorrow to actually bet it. But, yeah, I think the Vikings might offer a little bit of value on Monday night. All right, that's the Week 10 look-ahead lines. For John Breach, I'm Will Brinson. See you guys later.